Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Token Cast Live Stories. I'm your host and sometimes referee, the friendly neighborhood Zach Stat Pearson. And today, I'm joined by he who is legend, not only in league, but of the group, a one double X. That's you. I know. It's me, your boy. What's up, everybody? Long time no see, but I'm back. So uh, let's get it cracking. Yeah, um, just a little bit of an update since you've been gone. Um, I know you've heard about it, but or maybe maybe it just came up in passing or not. But we do have national distribution now. Apparently, the people we were using to do the distribution got bought by Spotify. So, you know, we're that much easier to find nationwide. We're also available on Amazon Music, iTunes now, and we got verified on YouTube. So, yay. Hey, big thanks. Love that, man. Congrats to all that. Yeah, uh, I appreciate it. And I I mean it when I say I got where I got because of people like you, because I told everybody from the beginning, I did not want to do any of this solo. So, you know, the fact that I can get a group that wants to participate, even if it's just once, is the reason that any of this is even happening. So if anything, congratulate yourself, man. For sure, man. (laughs) Okay, so um, it hasn't come up often. Uh, and in fact, I think it didn't even come up the whole entire time we were both on the same barracks. But I technically did double basic. Not fun. Yeah, you would tell me about that. Like, we've talked briefly about it, and I kind of just laugh at you the entire time when you bring it up. Fuck you. But, but to be fair, I've gotten used to it. So essentially, uh, because of my unique situation, um, I went to basic late. However, that unique situation for most people has never gotten fully explained. Even on this channel, there are people that know about it or people that ask me about it, but I gave maybe a one or two sentence answer. In this particular part of the, you know, camouflage life trilogy, maybe duology, uh, I'm going to try to explain what happened and some comical events that happened along the way, obviously. However, at the end of it, it, well, it'll kind of end where you begin so you may not remember it but one of the first reasons we got into contact was is because when we were doing last call and towing the line uh i'll explain that later for the uninitiated listening to this uh someone had asked me about hey did you ever get your money back from that kidnapping and you and like three other people just goes what kidnapping I was like oh yeah a few weeks back i got kidnapped real talk with like two other privates really like yeah i'm not bullshitting you and that's essentially how, you know, we all met. Spoilers for the ending. Yeah. yeah great time. Great time. It was a very comical, very comical kidnapping. And I even found the footage from that, some of the footage from that day. I don't know why my forehead was really shiny, but uh, I did find footage from the day that me and some of the homies got kidnapped. So I got even more proof that it happened. Also, who the fuck would make that shit up? Um... But yeah, before that comes, well, the rise and fall of fucking with Uncle Sam. All right. So uh, starting this off, I started off with the army and I was technically recruited by what my state thinks is one of the best recruiters that there's ever been. They Um, lied. Yeah. This guy named Sergeant Waste. They even gave him a fucking ring for how many recruits he got in. However, he's a self-serving narcissist who's lost the ability to have empathy if he even had it. So essentially, he's the one person you don't want in the military, and he is in the military. Also, he hates gay people and does not respect them. R- motherfucker's really bad in a thousand. Um, Sergeant Waits, which fucking hilarious, because he was a fat ass. It was just perfect naming. Perfect names are going to come up a lot in this when it comes to sergeants, you, and I'm not even joking. It's kind of so, ironic how that happens. Like, they get put in a position to just be ironic based on their name. Bro. Bro, wait till we get to Sergeant Sites, who couldn't see shit. <sighs> I know I told you about it like six years ago, but I love going through it because I still fucking don't respect that dumbass. Anyways, all right, so f- I am a resident or well, native because I've lived in multiple states. I'm a native of Illinois. So getting into or finding a recruiter was not hard where I was at. And I essentially wanted to do some things in my life that. Not so much required a two-year or four-year or even an eight-year degree, but 
it had multiple routes to get in and I just had to pick one and try to grow from there, grow a seed, have the seed turn into a mighty tree of knowledge and then, you know, take from the fruit of success. I wanted to do a mix of action choreography, not a school for that shit. And also I wanted to be involved with game design, but I didn't know if I wanted to direct or if I wanted to be involved on the animation side, not the 2D to 3D side. Because as we all know in the game design world, um, it's ironic, but most people who work on and, and are involved with game designing don't actually learn any form of game design training. They learn the stuff around it. 3D animation, visual effects, compositions, blah, 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 blah. So obviously like anybody in my age group, why should I pay for this when Uncle Sam can pay for it for me? You know the drill. I won't bore you with that. Yeah, the, the greatest game in the world. <laughs> yeah. So, um, my father had died not too long ago, and bills were piling up. You missed that episode, and I kind of... It would have got rated R real quick if you'd been there, because let's just say a lot of people want to kill or beat the bejesus out of my cousin who robbed my dad while he was dying after he got him a job and let him stay with us. Oh yeah, that's probably good I missed that one. Yeah. Yeah. Let's just say if I found out he died tomorrow, I would sleep well that night. <laughs> New phone who this? <laughs> um, so anyways, what ends up happening is I get in and Eventually, I get shipped out. The first place they sent me was Fort Sill. And as we all know, every single fort has a name, um, a nickname, derogatory and positives. Sill is a bit unique. They have a negative or derogatory nickname, but it's not that bad. Fort Sill's nickname is Fort Chill. Because that place can get so cold that it can actually hold up training and formations which i mean hey is anybody really mad at that oh no we don't have to go outside at 5 a.m in the morning in fucking shorts to do pt woe yeah. is me that, that oklahoma morning fit different don't get me wrong though we still did that and i didn't get sensation in my big toes again until three months later not a joke by the way apparently people think i'm joking when i say that like no they made us do PT and the grass was so cold from push-ups, it could actually poke us through our clothes. That's how fucking cold it was. The grass was sharp. Oh yeah, I grew up in Oklahoma. I know all about that life, dog. Oh shit, uh, nah, I ain't gotta tell you twice then. <laughs> so eventually we get HBL and me not realizing HBL or rather, it was weird. My drill sergeants were just really anxious for everybody to get the fuck out of there they weren't even staying themselves but they was like look go to fuck home privates just go the fuck home and they wouldn't tell us why they were so hell bent on having us go the fuck home you're not good they're not going to be there either was, i wanted to change my mind and i did because i figured hey i can get do some more pt while i'm here and my drill sergeant who sounds i shit you not like hank hill a dude by the name of Drill Sergeant Marvick, not Maverick, Marvick, said in his Hank Hill voice, Pearson, just go fucking home. Not in that, I don't want to ever see you again, in that I'm not doing the paperwork I need for you to get out of HBL. You're going on HBL. Yeah, don't make me work today. Just, just you, fucking leave, dog. Yes, that's basically what it was. Don't make me fucking do my job. Um, So, and uh, again, for the layman's, HBL stands for Holiday Block Leave. Essentially, it's um, not mandatory, but a lot of people take it. Vacation time of year that is essentially only offered to lower ranks to immediately be discharged temporarily for a 14-day vacation, right? Uh, I don't know if discharge is the time I'd use. You get put on leave Oh, yeah, to uh, go get home. a va vacation request, yeah. a 14-day vacation approval. Let me just Over that. the Christmas holiday Yeah, and uh, New Year holiday. Yeah, because there's it's kind of it's kind of fortuitous, but almost every single country and every single um, uh, culture near the end of the year is a holiday bracket, which is pretty cool that all of us collectively as humans decided, hey, we made it through this year. Fuck it. We partying. <laughs> um, oh, oh, hell yeah. hundred percent. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. So I, I went 
and one day in everybody hates it but i don't i don't really care planet fitness look i take whatever gym's closest to me i ain't a little bitch hey that sounds like little bitch energy fuck you it was the closest I, that's gym so, it that's was the closest gym bro it's planet fitness oh. moving on i am in the locker room which they allow the female attendants to clean during work hours and did not tell anybody um a fucking dog wandered in like very quietly someone's dog got through the door front entrance and since you know it was uh lower than the desk just wandered into the men's bathroom however they were installing new lockers on the right wall and they have these benches bolted into the floor i don't know why benches need to be bolted in the floor in a fucking planet fitness like so you don't fitness. take that shit man have bro, you seen planet fitness who you know is gonna take a regular ass bench though bro i know people who take shopping carts like middle class people that just still walmart shopping class that is a bench, fucking weird like so much I, I don't that. disagree with you i was telling you what it is bro people like, are out here like that bro like it, it got so bad over here where i'm because i'm in like well i used to live near a very very popular district uh i don't know if you heard about the mall with the most space by square foot not stores is ford city i actually live near that mall like i could walk to it if i wanted to i shit you not some days i will go whether it's by a car or it's by the bus and i will see people too trifling to take their own fucking bags out of the fucking cart and walk across the street to a bus stop they will take the whole fucking shopping cart and then get on the bus and leave the shopping cart there so now they started putting in sensors so two of the wheels will lock up if it goes past the parking lot that's funny as shit like, the fact that they like, even had to do that like like the fact that the shopping carts on house arrest or some shit yes <laughs> you, you can't leave the yard dog yes that's exactly what we used to say. Why the fuck they got shopping carts on house arrest? And he's, it wouldn't even be like some young, arrogant people. It'd be like these old ass biddies. Yo, old, old ass, lazy motherfuckers. Yes. P perfectly capable, just too goddamn lazy for it. Yes. So, um, and the dog barked while the dude was installing the, sh uh, the lockers. And he apparently didn't like the noise from the power tools or whatever. So he started growling. And I'm on the bench. And I'm looking up, it's like, and there's a dude next to me. He turns and sees him. He's like, he goes, what the hell? He's like, I don't think that's a service dog. Whose dog is that, right? So then he starts running at me. And I'm just like, whoa, what the fuck's going on, buddy? We trying to box? And then boom. So like four lot, those, some of those lockers were like conjoined. So it wasn't individuals. They were all conjoined. Yeah, yeah. All of them hit me dead ass on the spine. Because remember, I'm sitting on the bench but i'm facing the bench i'm not sitting sideways so i lined up perfectly and because i was also jerking away i also technically hit the lockers before they fell on me because you know the dude startled me and i thought me and him was about to box so you know uh i i get a little bit of medical attention they give me some strong stuff and i know i can't bring medications and shit like that back with me so i'm like fuck it i'm not gonna do that so I get back and first thing you notice is that I cannot stand straight at all, nothing. They send me over to the medical wing and the first person I meet is Private Sergeant. <laughs> oh my God. That's a marital name, by the way. So that means somewhere on Fort Seal, there was a drill sergeant, Sergeant. I literally only remember her because her name was Sergeant. Yeah, I've, I've met some private majors before. <laughs> so um through you know so but however after hbl there's like two weeks left of our training our training was so backed up we were three weeks behind there was supposed to have been a group to come replace us three weeks ago so we had a very unusual hbl we basically came back just to finish out like two two fridays um so there was no way in fuck i was gonna heal that fast and what happens is I get sent over to medical barracks and they put me on a dead man's profile for 72 hours. However, they started or A131 was getting ready to essentially put me into dishonorable status and declare me AWOL. These dumbasses somehow lost me. 
how'd they lose your big goofy ass? One, fuck you. Two, because it's Uncle Sam life. We all know the military doesn't work on what's the right thing to do. It works on are we getting caught fucking up? And they and whoever lost track of me didn't get caught fucking up. This is bro, I shit you not. This is what happened verbatim, right? I go in there, they x-ray me. Because you know, you always want to make sure if someone says they got problems, they're not bullshitting. They x-ray me. They say, hey, listen, your spinal curve is a problem. Your spinal wasn't your spine wasn't curved like this until fairly recently. They're like, yeah. It's like, okay, because I think at the degree and angle that you're at, we wouldn't, you won't be able to stay in the military. Bro, my heart felt like it grew the size of a bowling ball when that dude said that. And then he tells me, but I'm not sure. How about you start with that? Yeah, let's leave with that. Like, there's other ways to phrase that to not make my heart jump out of my chest. You know Thank what I mean? You. Like, come on, let's, what's your professional courtesy, your bedside manners, anything. Yeah, and you know, and the worst part is that it's military basic uh, fucking medical facility. So they know they shouldn't be an asshole to us, but they choose to be because they can get away with it. Like, I honestly don't hate doctors, but I hate any fucking military doctor I ever see in my life. Because when I ask a genuine question about my body, you know what their response is? Don't ask me no stupid shit like that. I'm like, what do you mean stupid shit? You got an eight year degree. This isn't basic information. Are you talking back? It's like, are you my doctor or not? What the fuck is going on? But apparently they can do that. That's why I don't like them. Because yeah, that's they, a weird ass fucking double sided blade they got that they can play anytime they want. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. Unfortunately, the dude was a major. I wasn't going to be talking back to his ass anyway. But he got offended by basic questions. So I was like, man, fuck this dude. So they say, hey, we're going to we're going to book you for physical therapy. You're going to be here for a while. I was like, yeah, kind of figured. But, you know, I, I will perform my duties to the best of my ability. Uh, so I, I didn't look at it like a net negative because let's stop and think about it when it comes to healing it, it's been proven scientifically that if you stay in a negative mindset it can't affect how long it takes you to heal from something so i was looking at like hey well i'm gonna get buffer than all my friends worst case scenario so it's a win-win for me you know trying to just stay positive about it so they had me go back to the barracks i sent some note to my drill sergeant they say okay you need to get a 72 hour bag Get everything you need. We're going to ship you out over there, right? And I go over there. I end process to what people have heard me call C95. And we all know what the nickname for any medical battery is, especially when they were dumb enough to make it start with the C. So the nickname for my entire new battery was Cripple 95th. Yep, now that checks out. Because, you know, there's nothing like being an asshole to people who got hurt. Um, And believe me when I tell you, that name got used a lot it's that perfect mix of it's not racist it makes you look like an asshole but a drill sergeant's job is to look like an asshole yeah it's like it, it's too fitting that you can't really call me on it either way yeah so yeah I, I promise you there are drill sergeants who had to ask me what my name is because we had to go someplace where they might get in trouble for saying hey cripple come here fuck yeah you. military etiquette love it yep that is the best name for it hashtag military etiquette so uh i go over there and they're like jesus christ yeah you go sit somewhere and don't do anything now normally you would think they're being a dick about it but no reminder i'm on a dead man's profile for the uninitiated a dead man's profile basically means that you have a medically signed document stating that you're basically forbidden for doing any form of strenuous physical activity you're allowed to breathe and That's even it. then don't take a deep breath. <laughs> yeah, that's that's basically it. I don't have to do push-ups. Uh, if they punish me, the only thing they can do is fucking yell. Um, but they would do that any damn way. And that's literally it. I'm basically untouchable, but not in a good way, depending on who you ask. So I go in this place, and I'm immediately cut off from, from everything. I can't even use a phone, because my phone is in a completely different company, or battery, sorry. Uh, it's over at the 131's battery. So I'm here and I am essentially one of one of the guys. We sit in the room for like five or six hours and then we go eat and then we go to our rooms and go to sleep and we do the same thing over. It is the closest you can get to a prison sentence without it being a prison sentence, right? But you're still getting paid that entire time. 
you have no connection to the outside world. I never said you were spending that money. I said you were getting money. <laughs> well, hey, look, you're looking at silver lining, so now you're getting it. Um, so hey, I've, I've been in this game a long time. That's all I got left. <laughs> so eventually, I get assigned to the physical therapy um, department. Same building, but you know the people are a lot human. So I can't remember all their names, and I really do regret it because these are the people that taught me how to walk again. But I do remember Staff Sergeant Gray, which I can promise you by now, he's probably at a bare minimum Master Sergeant Gray. But at, we're going by rank at time of story, so he's Staff Sergeant Gray. Now, Staff Sergeant Gray and his crew, I told them what was going on, and they said, hey, listen, I know they, they it was more like empathy or just an understanding because they didn't know my situation. They didn't know that I was sitting in this room doing absolutely nothing except for the one day a week that I was going to do PT training right so he set it up a new training method for me to where i can come every other day and i was so grateful because that means i i, I have less chance of losing my fucking mind right yeah you get to you know walk outside for a little bit on an, on an additional de day yeah and also like i'm i'm in a gym and when i get food it actually tastes good and i don't have to wait in a long ass line so um, and about 10 days into it, the fourth platoon, AKA the outlaw platoon, weird name for a military group, the outlaws, the outlaw platoon, which uh night Walker, uh, who's a, a member of the group is actually from that platoon. Their lead Sergeant came up to me and says, Oh, Hey, well, everyone's looking for you. Where you been? The fuck? So he asked me what happened to me. I was like, they gave me a dead man's profile and they gave me red meds and didn't tell me and then said I had to stay here until I'm completely healed. Uh, I had a spinal, I have a, I have a severe spinal curve and they, they think it might be temporary or permanent. I was like, oh, yeah, we don't cover those. What? Yeah, we don't actually cover spinal injuries, really, or the VA doesn't. And I knew I've never made this man mad. I've never even seen him get mad. And he's talking to me like he just saw me walking across the street. I knew immediately he was not fucking with me. And I didn't get, when I say I didn't get no sleep that night, I mean, when I laid up in my bed, I don't even remember really closing my eyes for longer than five minutes. Because I'm just like, so I get hurt and I'm doing physical therapy and I might get kicked out. And, and it's then, all going to come out of your pocket yeah i was just like i was in that space that you don't want to be in when you hear something like that but as with all things coming to an end it's been 10 days so that essentially means anybody who was chaptered out also ends up in c95 for 14 days whoever got chaptered out is now from my barracks or my um entire fucking uh battery i get to see them again i know it's bittersweet but you know we reconnect it we got to talking, we got to chill, you know, they lifted up my spirits a little bit. So eventually I did get a secondary x-ray much, much later. And it was like, hey, it looks like your curve is going back to normal. I was like, cool. Well, how long till I can get out of here? Now, here's what I didn't know. All the sergeants in the physical, in the medical field essentially know that we don't properly train people to pass the PT test. Shocker. Right. We Crazy. Yeah, we basically either want you to a, have already passed, the, be able to pass the PT test before you get here, or you're getting remedial training, but that is so rare and inconsistent and lottery based, you shouldn't count on it as a guarantee. Most people who end up in remedial training, they were in medical like me. They were in the medical section. So he had decided he wanted to make sure my body was PT proof. Let's put it that way. Damn, that should be on the shirt. PT proof. And he was making me train with machines I couldn't even fucking tell you the name of um, to get my body ready to immediately to take the PT test, not necessarily go back to my company. I mean, my battery. There was a ceiling bicycle, bro. I don't know how to explain it. It was like bicycle pedals coming out of the, uh, the ceiling, but they were for your hands. And it had like a equalizer menu system 
and it could change its resistance and tell you if you want to roll it rotate forward or rotate backward I've, I've, I've seen what you're talking about like yeah. when I had my uh, shoulder surgery I had to use one of those yeah. um, during my rehab so I know exactly what you're talking about and it was like and for me it was like less than a foot away from the treadmill so that room was so small but believe me when I tell you I Apollo Creed 3 Apollo Creed 2 Michael B. Jordan I was too damn buff when and I don't mean that to make myself sound cool I mean like I was going up to the sergeants and asking them hey can I get permission to go to like the PX and get clothes because I'm cutting off my own circulation sometimes real talk that shit don't fit y'all yeah right I wasn't getting taller necessarily I, I somehow grew a half inch but I was getting wider and toned but Zach's head come you didn't put any pictures online well because I don't need the internet to validate my existence and my self-esteem and ego is not boosted by people telling me hey I want to fuck you now that I now that you're appealing to me and my senses when I know half of those people would not fucking take that shit from me on their best day yup people fucking you. just be like that I know it's so bullshit because you and I both know there's a woman on our social media pick a date pick a name and they probably exist who they make all these sexy ass pictures and shit and they got all these people hey damn, damn girl you fire all this shit and they'll be married or they'll be in a relationship why are you doing that oh well I can do that until I'm a woman's like no that's not the problem the problem is you're acting like you don't know what you're doing but if I turned around and I said anything bad about somebody looking at me with like, you know, obliques and an eight pack damn near almost able to do one arm pull ups and shit. And, and they start trying to drink me down. And I said, how dare you, madam? I look like I'm gay. Thousand percent. They would ping you for that so damn quick. The good old fashioned and society. So that was the main reason. Um, and also, you know, it didn't really change my face much. I mean, I got a little bit more fuzz, but you, know, you couldn't tell by looking at my face. You would literally have to see me in like a shirt or something. So eventually, um, I get rotated down to, what was it? Two months later, I get emergency leave. Now, here's the weird part. <laughs> tell me this ain't the most military thing you've ever heard in your life. In order for me to go to utilize my emergency leave and come home, of which I only needed 10 days or less for this incident that was going on, um, I had to out-process from Charlie 95th, then go almost three miles to the other side of the fucking base, back to Alpha 131, to be signed out of there, instead of people using the damn fax machines and then i my first sergeant could only sign get me signed out at 3 15 a.m my flight wasn't until 10 a.m then what i the had hell to does that work then i had to take the van oh we'll see pt training is in the morning so the first sergeant and the exo get in there early sometimes so that's the only reason i had to do it at that time Instead of just waiting till 10 a.m. Like they weren't going to be around like 7 or 8 a.m. Like they weren't going to be on the clock at that time. Then I had to get back in that same fucking van. Then I had to go and get all of my shit together that I wanted to take. Then I had to fucking... And, and instead of just getting the clothing, I had to go and pack everything. I had to pack up everything, everything. As if I was leaving the base permanently. Then I had to take that shit, which I knew I wasn't going to be able to do. But luckily, because, you know, I'm not stupid. I fucking mailed the shit to myself right so i had like an extra five six hours in the airport i was like nah fuck that i am going to mail this to myself and luckily i got on that i got on that bitch you know pretty light and then that's how i got home i had to go through four different processes because somebody didn't want to send an email or a fax good old military life yeah, no, military life's the best. It, it's the dumbest shit like that, dude. Like, for so real. So easy to fix. And it, they just it drives me drives me wild, even in, like, what I'm doing currently. Um, but, hey, uh, I need to take five real quick. 
No, yeah, that's fine. Right I back. can pause the recording. Ah, right, right back. Okay, sorry for that little break. We had a small little intermission. All right, so I get back, and again, I tell my first sergeant, hey, listen, you can send me right back out. I only need 10 days. I'm not trying to get more than 10 days. Oh, well, it'll go how it goes, Pearson, you know. Um, resolve what you need to resolve. Make sure you report to duty on time. I was like, sure thing. Yes, sir, yes, sir, first sergeant, all that jazz. So six months later, and two days ahead of schedule that they gave me, I go back into service and I end up at Fort Wacky Jackie. <laughs> Good old uh, Relaxing Jackson. Yeah, yeah. So Jackson, besides, you know, being a fort that shouldn't be named that way. Or was it fucking Robert E. Lee? Which, again, shouldn't be named that way. I was either at Fort Jackson or Fort Lee. I want to say Fort, yeah, Fort Lee. So uh, That's why I met you with Lee. Oh, you met me at Lee? Correct. Okay, so then it was Jackson because this is still basic. All right, so I'm over at Jackson and things go normal. <laughs> Everyone was curious why I had a full set of ASUs day zero, but things went pretty fucking normal. Yes, there were dysfunctional sergeants. Yes, there were dysfunctional privates. And yes, somehow my sergeant in his infinite pettiness, one of them, tried to convince me, quote unquote, that I was the worst private he ever had because I sneak into formation every day. So obviously, you already know who this is about, but for the uninitiated, I didn't actually do that. And also, um, if that's what makes me the worst person, then you don't know anything about your own fucking privates. Because there was a guy who literally never cleaned shit a day in his life while he was in the military. And he just assumed someone would pick up his slack so he didn't get in trouble for him. I know, because he was my fucking quote-unquote partner that they stuck me with. Motherfucker wouldn't even sweep the damn floor. And they gave him a challenge coin. Hilarious. Anyways. Yeah, I mean, such a great, outstanding soldier, right? Yeah, you know. Uh, I'm sure his mom thinks that. Um, so... Uh, I end up leaving. However, because of being three seconds behind in my run and everyone knowing that's not a good enough reason to chapter somebody, they sent me over to remedial training and I was only there for four business days, but because of a holiday, they didn't ship me off to AIT. So total grand total as a BCT private, I was a BCT private roughly close to nine months whereas most people are bct privates two months or less that sounds miserable dog like fuck i can't even think about being hell in, yes being in basic that long bro fuck that. bro this is how fucked up i was when i got to ait my whole first week i kept calling people drill sergeant on an accident with the, okay in your defense there was a couple around browns at uh ait they were all dickheads but there was a couple there yeah um so then yeah we get to so and that brings us to fort lee which is where we're going to wrap this story but i will mention something that is very very hilarious along the veins of hey this is a problem that could easily have been fixed so the way training happens that facility has enough power as you know to be running 24 7 why not have a day class and a night class I and a bunch of other people specifically requested to be put in a night class because there was going to be a new sergeant and they won't have enough training space for him. So they said, oh, your your students are going to mandatorily be put on a night class because even though there's room in the barracks, classroom size is completely different. You know, yes, the military has a bunch of generators, but you can't just bring them bitches into that facility, the big ones, at least, you know, just because there's a bunch of people and then take it out or have it sit on his ass doing nothing. Um, you got to guarantee some rank before you can do that. So, uh, I end up going to the morning classes. 10 days later, they announced that they're making night classes and I'm not allowed to be in night classes because I'm in a morning class. It ain't some bullshit. Like, and the people who ha were put on night class, like were just the luckiest motherfuckers too, because yeah. that schedule they had was cake. Yeah. Yeah. And we never had to fucking help with any outdoor cleaning and shit. Cause we're sleep. <laughs> Um, I got put in a night class way, way later 
but primarily that was because of a, a knee related injury but we'll save that for the part two uh with that being said hey double x you know it's always good to have one of the legends come through um, you know, I don't know if you're trying to get linked up to any, any more stuff later this year or uh, later in, that I got planned, but you know, you're always welcome. The doors never close to my battles. Hey, for sure, man. I appreciate it. And like, you know, it's uh, it's never that I don't want to be. It's just that sometimes I just ain't got the freedom to be. No, I totally understand. Well, I mean, you see, I got a big group for a reason. Everybody got something going on. You're not even if it's just kids. Sometimes it's personal or sometimes it's just work schedule. They can't control it. All yeah, right. uh, I get that. Yeah. But thanks for having me again, brother. Good talking and catching up. No I'll try to be back on a little bit more frequently. Yeah, no problem. With that being said, that brings part one of The Mill Life to a close. And I will see you guys in part two.